Hey, what's up? It's Tackless, and today we're gonna to be looking at a video on how to do a better pause screen. I showed how to do a very simple pause screen earlier on my uh, player tile guide video, but this is a more advanced one. Um, this pause screen does have its limitations, which I'll be going over, but those limitations are fairly minor and can be worked around. So uh, let's let's give it a look. This is the pause screen, as you can see, it dims the screen and it looks at the world from an entirely different perspective. I didn't do it in this preview, but during the tutorial, I'll also show you how to hide the health and I have my little combo meter down there in the corner. Now, here's one of the, I don't know if you'd call it a limitation. Some people think this is cool. I don't exactly, but when I unpause, the camera flows right back to my player. So, that's what we're going for. I'm not going to be showing you what to put in your pause menu because everyone's going to have a different thing to put in their pause menu. But I'd recommend you put your inventory, your current quest objective, your XP level, your, I don't know, a picture of the enemy that you're targeting, or who knows, maybe the pause menu is just empty. Um, put settings there, maybe. Settings is a good place for that. And settings aren't nearly as scary to make as they sound. Pretty much it's just a Boolean toggle on something or a numeric raising or lowering of something. So, uh, let's get into it. Now this is actually somewhat easy, somewhat clunky to make. Um, first step, we're gonna go into our character's brain and we're gonna create a super simple line of code. When right bumper, that's the button I usually use for pausing, but it doesn't matter what button you use, pressed. Now I can never remember where this tile is, so I'm just gonna search toggle, global. New variable, and we're going to call this paused. Now, I've shown you how to make it so when right bumper pressed, it makes it true, and then after a half second, it makes it false. This is just a much cleaner, much faster way of doing that. So, that's all we need from the player. Now, we're going to grab two logic cubes, put them on the ground nearby, and I'm going to color these different so we can keep track of which one's which. So, this one is going to be... Let's do blue on this one. And then this one, let's do lime green. There we know. Now we know which one is which. On the blue one, actually, what we're gonna actually be doing, I should have made one cube and copy and pasted it, but when global paused equals not false, true. Switch page. Next page. And on this particular brain, we're also going to define the world pace. So global pace equals one. Then I'm gonna copy this, paste it on the other page, and when false, switch page, previous page. And we're gonna take the global pace, put it here, and put this to zero. This is the fundamentals of a pause screen right here. When it's true, it becomes slow. When it's false, it goes back to normal. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to copy this page, go over to the other brain, paste this page. Now I'm gonna remove the global space, go to the second page. Pretty much we're doing what we did on the first cube. The key difference here is this is gonna be the background brain. The, um, there's probably a better way to do this. There may be a better way to do this, but um, I found Project Spark and UI elements, especially stacking them on top of each other, can get kind of clunky. So this is the most reliable way that I found how to do it. So on page two of this, what we're gonna do is we're going to do display, um, screen center. We're not actually gonna be displaying anything in spe specifically. Um, let's see if I can remember how to do all this. As text box. Um, no, Xbox, stop listening. No, don't say, uh, stop listening. I love you, Xbox, but sometimes you can just do really weird things. So what we're going to do, uh, minimum lines, we're going to do... 50, then 
minimum width, we're also going to do 50. And then scale, we're also going to do 50. This will completely cover the entire page in a text box without any outline because it's so big. This is much bigger than necessary, but this is also easy. So um, there we go. So that's what this brain is. That's the blue brain. And now we can leave it alone for the rest of the time. Green brain. When it lets me move my controller. This is where all the fun happens. So, um, first off, because I don't want the player to be able to control their camera, and I don't want to do a lot of command, more commands on the player brain, something I like to do to also kind of make the pause screen its own separate thing is make it its own camera. So what I've done earlier is I've grabbed the character model and I've placed it right here. Now, it really doesn't matter where you place this. I like to place it in a spot that just kind of overlooks the landscape or looks at one, th one specific thing in your world that's important. Like, let's say the theme of your world is a special sword. Then you better show that special sword in your pause screen so that the player never forgets that's the goal. But here, it's just looking over the landscape. So we're going to go back into the green brain and do first person camera in world picker, the camera without controls. Now we also want to make it kind of bl blurry. So camera effects, depth of field, and you can rummage around these as much as you want, but I'm not going to worry about it. Now we're going to do display text and for some visual interest I'm gonna add some manual kerning by putting a space in between each letter pause top center extra large um, let's see it's also good to have a pause sound so what I'm gonna do is started to play sound and let's see, UI, let's see, that's a good sound. And we need this to do overlapping everywhere. Everywhere is important because this logic cube is not going to travel with us. So this is kind of the basics of the brain. From here, it's really up to you on what you want to add into the brain. You can add <clears throat> their health bar, you can add their XP, you can add... Really, whatever I mentioned earlier. Um, there's a lot you can do here. So, I'm also going to go into the player brain now. And I'm going to make his health and combo meter bar not appear while paused. So, as you can see, I have my health here. And then I have two different display colors of my charge meter here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new line. And make these all child lines of that one line. Then when global paused equals false. This way these only display when it's not paused. Now let's give it a go. There we go. Look at that. My UI disappears and everything looks good. Now what is cool is that the way I've done this dynamic pause camera system thingy is that if you look carefully, you'll be able to see the player, him, herself in the pause screen. Let me get to a higher place, like uh, this tree. Also, do you like my spaceship? You can't see it very well, but I made a spaceship out of uh, those new shapes. So, I'm going to double jump, and as you can see, up in the top left corner, I'm in the pause screen, and it's awesome. So... That's pretty much the pause the screen. One last thing I want to show you. The reason that the uh, camera is transitioning to the player, let's go into the player brain. If we go to the camera, it has a transition easing time of 0.5. If this was not here, these four tiles, then the pause screen would cut right back to the player rather than, um, rather than transitioning back. Now, if you really felt like you were hardcore into the transitions, you could also make the player transition to the pause screen by doing 
Oh, no, that's depth of field. Uh, transition easing, ease between, uh, transition speed. No, 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 not transition speed, transition time. Very big difference there that you come to appreciate when you mix those two tiles up. So what happens now is that. Now, if you really like that, which it looks good right there. It looks really good right there. But if I was to run to the far side of the map with terrain and trees and all that in between us, it doesn't look quite as good. At least I don't think so. If you're into that, good for you. You know how to do it now. But I'm going to run over here. And then pause. Cuts right through the terrain and everything. So I don't know how you feel about that. I'm not a huge fan. But, you know, it's up to you. So that's how you do a pause screen. Um, yeah, that's the end of the tutorial. One last thing I want to talk about unrelated to this tutorial, if I can ever stand up on this stupid lily pad, is the Project Spark full release is coming out in like four days. Holy cow, that's a big deal. I can't wait. I've got awesome ideas planned. And um, I know I just showed off my Broken Minds trailer. <laughs> uh, that project is going to be um, postponed for a little bit until I can get the sci-fi-ness out of my system. Don't worry, I will get back to it. I will finish it. It'll be a great world. But um, I just, I, I need to make an awesome sci-fi world first or else I'll never be happy. So, one other last thing. Uh, it was just, just announced that if you pre-order the Project Spark starter kit, you will get a Nomad character. Um, I've looked at what's in that starter pack and I own enough of the content in it that it's simply not worth my $40. However, if anyone else is going to pre-order that pack, I would be very interested in trading, buying, acquiring that Nomad from you if you didn't want it. So, I don't know. I could do a few tutorial videos for you. I could pay you a couple of dollars or put like a, I don't know, an Xbox Live card code towards you or something like that. Or I don't know. So, just thought that was worth mentioning. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I will see you.